All right. We're we're already laughing, which means we we've been joking behind the scenes. But welcome to the second episode of Fundraising Outside the Box with Karen and Joe. Karen still has top billing. Uh, I'm working on that, but so far with absolutely no success. Um, uh, welcome back, everybody. Again, we, Karen and I have been excited about this. The response to our our first class was, was off the charts, and, and, and we're hoping to hit a home run again. And as you see, I'm dressed up in softball attire for reasons. Oh, that I got the whole evident. home run thing. That was yes, awesome. I, I, listen, I've, I've been working on that all day long. So uh, <laughs> welcome, Karen. How are you? I'm good. Hi, everyone. It's Karen again. Um, I'm a Relay for Life team captain for New Core Steel. Um, and Joe, you want to introduce yourself a little bit more than just Joe? Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm Joe. You know, my home relay is the, the Relay for Life of Hope Lodge here in New York City. Um, but uh, like, uh, like Karen, you know, I'm fundraising all over the place and, you know, taking in ideas from everyone and just gr so great to see everybody being so active and kind of aggressive in fundraising this year with all that's going on. So, hey, let's get it going. A another great class today, um, which is going to touch on online auctions. Yeah, we've had a lot get. of... Yes. Uh... Since the last class, we asked you guys what you guys wanted to talk about, and we've had a lot of people um, asking about how to do online auctions, um, another virtual type of fundraising. And so with us today, we have Lindsay Groth. Um, she is from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we'll let Lindsay introduce herself, how she uh, became associated with American Cancer Society, and, um, and what kind of fundraiser she does. Lindsay? Yeah, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Joe. So, um, yeah, I've been uh, associated with American Cancer Society uh, since about 2014, uh, working with the Mich University of Michigan Softball Academy, um, which is on a mission to help eradicate uh, breast cancer. And to date, I believe the last number was uh, these, the Michigan softball team has raised a little bit over $1 million. Um, wow, awesome. Awesome. Um, towards this cause. So um, I've been, the way the academy works is when we could do in-person events, they had a physical academy at the softball field uh, where the student athletes would run different um, uh, clinics with us, batting, pitching, that kind of thing. Um, and then after there was a in-person um, a fundraising event um, where there was an auction. And so as part of um, being on the committee and working with the broader team, we started to question, okay, how can we scale? How can we get bigger? And so we moved it from being a manual, right? It, my, you know, don't, uh, my uh, bid amount down on a piece of paper to online, which now, you know, puts our arms around, you know, a more of a national footprint and um, can reach Michigan alumni, softball alumni, across the nation. So um, that's the, uh, the kind of the background and context for the Michigan Softball Academy and in essence, the reason why we went online. I've actually heard that from a lot of folks that used to do um, paper auctions at their events, that they are now moving to the online auctions, even though they are starting to have the events live again, they still want to continue to do the online auction because of exactly what you said, Lindsay. It's reaching a, a broader audience than just having it at the event. Yeah, there was constantly demand for, I mean, you know, if, probably with most auctions, assigned softball by, you know, the coach or, you know, assigned basketball by our, you know, head coach, all of that stuff is, is in demand. And when it's so limited to, you know, the, the folks who, the 300 attendees uh, to the event after, um, you know, it's just, you know, you're, you're not, you know, getting enough reach, you're, you have an opportunity, in a, in a sense, not to make it sound like you're, out here to make money, but you're leaving money on the table. And it's, it's, it's right. We, we are too. We are to out here. To make money. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm in the corporate world for my, you know, it's how I make a living. So I'm, I'm cautious of, you know, reminding myself that this is philanthropic, not <laughs> for profit. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, someone in, in the, on the East coast can be bidding against someone on the West coast who can be bidding against someone in Ann Arbor um, for that, you know, signed basketball or football. 
I, I think that's been a pleasant surprise of, of so many of the, I'll call them virtual efforts that people have made, is they find out that all of a sudden their reach on whether it's a luminaria ceremony or a survivor speaker is not limited or, or just kind of dependent on who turns up for the physical event, but they're kind of able to get out there and kind of broaden the, you know, the demographic and the reach. And um, I, I've taken a look at your site and, and I think it's, it's just a remarkable, you know, example of, of really how you can put something together that again, that can reach coast to coast and, and not limit who's looking at it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, the tool we're going to showcase today is a tool called um, Greater Giving and ACS has a partnership with Greater Giving. Um, and so when when you want to do an auction through Greater Giving, it's really not that hard to get kicked off. Um, you do have to have your ACS staff, um, you have to get them involved because they have to um, get with Greater Giving, um, set up your user and password, um, initiate your site and connect it to whatever um, ACS event that you're fundraising for with accounting type codes. Um, so it takes, I think they said on average about a week to get it all set up and ready to go. Um, but tell us a little bit about the experience once you get it set up, um, once you have that user login and the site's all set up. Um, I don't, are you a technical person um, normally in life or, and how did you find using the tool? I mean, were you overwhelmed? Was it easy to use? Give us just a, a you know brief. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we um, have refined a process over the course of you know four the four or five years. I, uh, I should say three or four years. I've been working on the auction. Uh, so to answer your question uh, very directly and bluntly, I find it, the tool to be very easy to use, uh, fairly intuitive. Um, but you know, part of that is also the. Um, methods that we put in place. So for example, like you said, you need a username and password. Well, it's, I would also highly recommend that whoever's on your auction committee and gathering all of the items that you just create a simple Google spreadsheet. Um, and, you know, that way it's shareable and you can, you know, enter all of the, um, you know, the item name, the value and all of those uh, required uh, fields that have to be entered into greater giving so that, you know, it's a, it's a very, once you're logged in, it's a very seamless streamlined process of click enter item and you start typing stuff in and, you know, you put your marketing brain to work and, you know, you come up with catchy little quirky headlines for, for things to try and, you know, promote the, the item and you hit save and, and it's done. And I, I mean, it really is, um, close to that simple. Yeah. Um, one of the things we will do is um, Lindsay was kind enough to put together like an FAQ sheet on how to set all of it up. Um, we will share that along with, um, and it has in it the little spreadsheet she put together to track the items off um, line. And so we'll put that all out on our, um, our fundraising outside the box Facebook page. Link. Yeah, and I, and I can tell you, for, for years, I've always wanted to engage in an online auction, and I've never really been able to find the tool to, to kind of get it done. I was never satisfied with the stuff, you know, um, uh, that I was coming across. But I, I went through Lindsay's, you know, you know, uh, A to Z sort of list on how to do it. And even though I'm very well known for my technical skills and my <laughs> mastery of computers and Zoom and all things, you know, uh, innovative, uh, I got through it really easy. I, I, I really, I, I thought it was, I, I think it's going to be a great resource, which of course, like our other stuff, you know, we'll post, you know, uh, uh, links on the page to it once we, uh, once we, uh, we air this. Um, it, it seemed again, very intuitive. It, it made a lot of sense. And, and I thought you really did a great job on the A to Z's of how to get this done. Um, it doesn't explain why you haven't listed the the autograph that I sent you from myself. I, I just you know, I figured that would have been you know up there by now, but uh, you know maybe I was a little bit too late to the game on it. But uh, I think that was it, Joe. Sure. I, I think in theory, had you wanted to list that autograph, it, it, it seemed like it would have been real simple uh, to, to get done. <laughs> Don't it was give so me priceless that we just I was hoarding it for myself. I wasn't even going to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really mean priceless when you asked me the value. I thought it was like, yeah, what do you say? It's priceless. It's priceless, truly. <laughs> and that, speaking of priceless, that is one of the um, one of the options you can use for greater giving is, um, you know, you can set up 
what is the item worth? And if it is something like a memorabilia that is priceless, that is an option to be able to set it up as a priceless item. Um, but you can set uh, up different aspects of your auction, like what are the minimum bids and what are the, uh, the do you have a buyout option? Um, what are your bid increments? Um, who are the donors of the item? That uh, part, that that part, I love because again, it's it's a yeah. constant reminder. Listen, we're all getting you know uh, products or items from someplace. I just love the clarity of it and, and how the interface looks, and, and it just kind of drives home uh, and, and gives that spotlight to the donor. So really, a great option as well. Mm -hmm. And you can you can put as many pictures as you want with the item, different angles of the you know. So if we want to see Joe's head from a side view or straight on, or even even the back of Joe. Um, <laughs> We can actually do all all images of Joe if that's what you would really want in life. Um, but <laughs> so there are a lot of really neat uh, characteristics you can set up about the items. Um, you can actually build several items and put them together as a package. Um, or what I found easiest when I was using it is just creating like single item packages. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it very easy to use um, when a user logs in. Have, have you ever seen the user side of the experience when they're using Greater Giving? Like, have you logged on and bid on things? I have, yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Was it easy for the user or? Yeah, I, I mean, you can, you, I believe you just scroll through. I mean, I, I logged in last year. Um, well, I, I, I did it. I, I, so I'll, I'll, you know, again, I wanted to be a little bit familiar with, I know Karen, you've used it, you know, from the auction side. So I, I, I signed up as a user to kind of go through. On it. my and auction? On your auction and on Lindsay's auction. Did you so, buy anything? No, I got outbid on the Bear Bryant potato chip can. You know, there's <laughs> only so much money my wife is going to let me spend on the, I'm, I'm not even an Alabama fan, but I just thought, you know, Bear Bryant potato chip. It sounded like the thing to do, but somebody like outbid me sixty-five dollars. So I, I was there, um, but I, so I did. I did yours, and and, and Lindsay, I, I did uh, log on to yours. So, so from the user perspective, again, it's very pleasant looking. Uh, what I liked is I got to kind of see, even though you had a, a couple of, of different types of items, I definitely loved the ability to see that it was it, it was a theme. It was up from the softball team, and, and you had a lot of your items kind of skewed that way. So uh, I thought it was easy to go. I haven't bid on anything yet. I'm, I'm, I'm still looking you know, through some of the things. Uh, I'm looking for my autograph. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I thought it was super simple to scroll through. Um, one question I did have, if somebody bids, do they get like automatic notifications if you get outbid? Yes, they absolutely do. Um, so that, that is another nice option. Um, and you can, actually, um, you can actually send out emails or text to people who have registered to bid. So if you, you know, you look and go, oh my gosh, we have two hours left in our auction, you can send out a group, um, you know, spam of, of, hey, we're ending in two hours, make sure you get back on and, and, and bid on stuff. But as people get outbid, they do get notification that, um, that they are outbid. Um, another thing you can do as a user is when you're bidding on an item, say, say right now the bid's at $20, but I'm willing to go up to 100, I can set a max bid of $100. And as people bid against me, it will continue to increment for me until I hit my max of $100. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another nice option that, that folks have because they don't have to sit and worry about, um, about keep looking at the auction to see how they're doing. Yeah, I would, I would just go back and one note on the um, auction site is when you go to the main homepage where you get to scroll through and see all of the items, um, what you're going to see on the right hand side of the screen is a get started button and you'll click on that. And when you click get started, you do have to create an account. Um, if you're on the, this is on the bidding side of things as the consumer, um, if you want to go and bid on that signed jersey um, or, you know, Joe autograph, you have to, you do have to create that account. <laughs> Um, so that, you, and I believe once you create the account, that's when you start to get all of the notifications. Um, you mm -hmm. can sign up to receive text messages. You can do the bid increments, all of that, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah as soon as you, as soon as I signed up, I, I hit the get started button. I put in my information uh, and linked it. And then as soon as I hit, I hit you know, uh, register, I got uh, a confirmation by text message. And yeah. then I was ready to go. So okay. really super simple, uh, again, from a user perspective as well. 
and users great. and users do have to when they sign up for greater giving to be a bidder they do have to enter their credit card information um that is to me when we use the auction site one of the best parts of it is that <laughs> when the auction was over i didn't have to go out and collect the money for our 150 items i hit a button and it batched them all up and charged the credit cards of the winners um so it was one step and then that money flows from greater giving back to your event for acs so you don't even have to worry about that um one thing you do have to do is if you're tracking that on a um, site like a relay page or a um, you know any other kind of ACS fundraising page, they will have to do a offline credit, um, confirmed offline credit for that for it to show up on your page. It doesn't automatically show up on your on your fundraising page for the American Cancer Society, mm -hmm. but the money does flow to ACS automatically. Got it. That's great. Uh, Lindsay, again, one of the things I, I think I mentioned that I love is, is that you sort of got the sense of the theme for mm -hmm. the items that you were putting on there. So any suggestions you can give everybody? I mean, I'm sure, you know, on, on how you pick items, how many you like to pick, themes, you know, you know, where do you like to go and, and really kind of have to make it really a, a good experience for, from that perspective? Yeah, generally, um, in terms of quantity, um, you know, our sweet spot has been somewhere in the 40 to 60 range. Um, we've had in, in the upper range of 100, um, but we found that, you know, um, that, you know, a lot of the, those weren't the items that, you know, once we got into that 60 plus, it was like those items that people sort of bit on, sort of didn't, they could be left over from year to year. Um, you know, we, and so what we did is just, we've learned over time what people love and probably no surprise to, to most of you watching this that, um, you know, it's the autographed items. It's the, right. yeah, um, if, you know, for University of Michigan, so it's gonna be, um, you know, the Jawan Howard signed basketball. It's going to be the Hutch signed softball. It's gonna be the Jim Harbaugh signed football. I mean, those are the things that go. Um, and so any of that memorabilia, that merchandise that you can, you know, continue to add to your fan cave, as I call it, um, people love, you know, Detroit Tigers signed jerseys. If you can get signed hockey sticks. I mean, if you can get your pro teams um, going, you know, depending on, on, um, you know, who you have relationships with. Um, yeah. Golf seems to work. Spas, you know, seem to work. So, but we do kind of, like I said, keep it into that 40 to 60 range. Um, and surprisingly, the jewelry goes. Um, we get jewelry gift cards um, from some generous donors and uh, and even just some donated jewelry and, and people, um, you know, really bid on that. So right. those have been I kind of our success metrics, successful items, I should say. I apologize. I know it sounds like a, a dog is barking, but that's my stomach rumbling. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Um, so I, again, I, I hope that's not uh, distracting you. Um, but back to you. I, I also noticed that you have some experiences, uh, uh, like like I, I saw there was like lunch with like. Sorry, there it goes again. I should have eaten before. <laughs> Uh, I noticed that you had like lunch with a radio personality and stuff like that. How do you find that the experience items, you know, tend to, to perform? Oh, people love them. Uh, you know, it's um, been unfortunate, obviously, for all of us going through the global pandemic, all of those experiences. We used to have more experiences. We really cut back this um, this year because we just didn't know the status of whether we were going to be able, how, how much, um, you know, we were going to be able to gather, at least in the state of Michigan, um, with, you know, our, our different uh, varied restrictions and stuff. So we pulled back on those. But yeah, I mean, we have, you know, the lunch with the coaches, that kind of thing is, yeah, that stuff um, is awesome. Is, is awesome. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with who your, your chair is, you know, we have a chair of the academy this year who has a lot of um, connections, and is able to, you know, give us um, access to experiences that maybe someone else else wouldn't. I love that. And, and, and I guess that well, let's transition a little bit. That goes really to applicability. And, and I think, again, you know, you're doing it on a larger scale because you've been doing it for a couple of years. But again, once we get into local events and different events throughout the country, the point is people get to use whatever their resources are. And mm -hmm. that could become the theme of, of, of their particular particular auction. Like maybe if you prefer SEC over the Big Ten and are an Alabama fan over <laughs> a Michigan fan or something. 
<laughs> um, one of the other things I wanted to mention about greater giving, um, one of the things that I liked is that when you're setting up your um, items, you can categorize them as like electronics or, um, you know, travel, or you can set up your own categories, use the ones they have. But when someone's in the auction, if they're only interested in memorabilia, they can go to the category of memorabilia and see nothing but that, which is, it's kind of nice to be able to filter, especially when you have a lot of items in your auction. So yeah. just a little pointer. So you could do like a category for worthless autographs and that's where- And that's know, where you could potentially buy autographs. Yeah. Like <laughs> I want to see that up there next year. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bid on it. Go ahead, All Lindsay, right. put it on there. I'll, I've got five bucks to spare. Starting, yeah, I was going to say, what do you want me started at? $1.50? <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> so when you set up your auction, do you have an across the board increment that you do, or do you do it different for every item? Yeah, um, we do it different for, um, we, we look at, um, we kind of create the price range for each, you know, we look at the, um, the price range across all of our items and then we kind of create maybe four or five and then say okay for the lower uh, valued items we might go up five bucks for the okay. mid-range we might go up 15 <clears throat> for the high range we're going up 25 um i think there was one where we went up 50 but most of the time we've kept it i think somewhere between mostly between five and 25 um but we do vary it by item because you know if it's a 25 dollar item to double it you know yeah. it just yeah. doesn't make sense and then what about like when you're thinking about setting up your starting bids, is mm -hmm. there some kind of formula you use to, to decide how, where you're going to start the bidding? Yeah, <laughs> we, we usually start it either um, just below or right at about, uh, right at the value of okay. the item. Okay. Just below or right at, we'll make, you know, we just, it's a little bit of, uh, that's a little bit of art and science, you know, in, in that, you know, there Learning, isn't, yeah. yeah steadfast rule on, on what we follow there. And I, I didn't notice, what, what, what is your typical duration that you, that you have found as well? Yeah, we go or, for about, know, a week, of, you know, about a week, about a week. So how, how long is this auction open for? Um, so you keep them pretty tight actually. This would yeah, like a, little bit a week of to sense 10 days. Yeah, a week to 10 days. Yeah, depending, we've, we've been playing around with um, timing. Um, you know, when it was in person, it was a little bit shorter. I think it was only like seven days. But now with COVID, we've gone, I think it's gone, I think last year might have been 14 days. And this year, maybe, um, you know, 10 to 10 to 12 days, something in that range. So do you find that people wait to start bidding or or do they start bidding right away and then kind of ease up and then rush in at the end or? Yeah, you'll, you'll see like, yeah, that typical, you'll see, start to see like that initial wave, but our actual, the actual Academy is actually this Thursday. And that's when we're going to see it just like go right. bonkers because it'll close on the 13th. And that's when people, you know, continue to bid, but everyone's going to put their low entry level bid in, see where it, you know, what happens yeah. over the course of a, a week. And then, you know, at the event, that's when everything really takes off. How, how do you promote it? Yeah. So <clears throat> promoted um, mostly on social media <laughs> um, and through the um, softball Academy website. Um, and so you'll see it on, on the Academy website, you'll see it on our social media. Um, I believe, uh, the coach, the coach, um, goes out and has a, there's a local, um, radio station that she gets interviewed on every week and she promotes it that way. Um, so we really use all of our channels, um, to, um, to reach, you know, the broadest audience possible, but there's a heavy reliance on social media because that's where the community is. Right. And, and do you find that, because I, I noticed that, you know, you register donors and, and users register, are you able to capture that information again for like for the second go around, you know? Um... That's a good question. Um, I don't yes. know that answer. Yeah, you actually can. So, um, if, if you continue to use greater giving year after year, you, that, that information actually rolls over so that all of the people who are donors, um, even your items can roll over with you so that if you have some similar items, you can copy those um, easily for the next year. 
So that is one of the one of the nice things. How we used to do it is we would have like a sign in sheet, like a yellow pad, and then we would get like 100, 150 names. And then uh, every year our staff partner would just like lose it a day or two afterwards and we would lose it all. So I think I think this sounds to be more efficient. A little bit. Yeah, it's a little better than I don't want to I don't want to, you know, uh, throw stones. But that that was typically that was typically how we did it. And, and, And the more names that we got and lost, that's how we kind of measured what the success of the event was. And there is, there are some people who, you know, like say your, you know, 95 year old grandmother who doesn't have a credit card wants to bid on something. Um, As the auction administrator, you can actually go in and log her in um, and um, create a user for her without a credit card and then collect from her after. So there are options of doing it um, outside the box. Um, Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Karen, because uh, that was one of the... um concerns of moving to an online auction for uh, the Softball Academy was we have a generally more mature audience um, who isn't uh, tech savvy um, or assumed tech savvy, I should say, uh, to go and do bidding on the online, you know, for an online auction. And we, you know, we were, everyone was really worried about complaints. I think we received one complaint out of 300 people. And um, so it was, it, that wasn't a, a barrier to entry or to fundraising for um, the online auction. Yeah. I mean, we'll have those at our golf. We do ours for our golf tournament and, and um, we'll have those people who will say, show. what was that? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. We'll have those people who will come and say, hey, I want to bid on that. Uh, you know, my max bid's five grand, make it happen. Mm-hmm. And um, and so we, as an auction, as the auction um, administrators, we have the ability to go in and bid as that person as well um, so that uh, we can, you know, still get the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we, don't the, wanna, we don't want to turn away money. No. And, you know, I've never had a more positive experience, you know, <clears throat> with them, with you know, the American Cancer Society staff. I mean, they're there, they're on it. They support a greater giving. Um, so it's not like if you're running a Relay for Life um, auction, you don't, it's not like you don't have support from American Cancer Society staff. They're there, they're on it. So, well, um, and it's, and it's not just ACS staff, um, greater giving as you're in the tool building it, they have an online chat support mm-hmm. person that if you are stuck and you're like, okay, I'm having an issue, um, you can actually, you know, just click on the chat box and a, a person will jump on and, and talk with you about the issues you're having or whatever. Um, Good to know. And there are a ton of tutorials out there on, um, if you just go out and Google, you know, greater giving tutorial on accepting credit cards or whatever, there's a million videos out there that you can watch to help you through some tough spots if you have them. And then just the last thing that kind of came to mind is, as I was going through, how do you handle the shipping aspect of, of the items? Is, is there something that, that, that you add on? I mean, what, what, what do you find the best practice for, for taking care of shipping for, for winning bids? Yeah, I'm going to actually lob that one over to Karen because <laughs> I, I actually don't do that, the back end side of it. So there are a couple of options. Um, you know, for our golf tournament, um, we actually do we have some items that are just way too big for us to ship. So on the item description, we say, um, you know, shipping not included in this item, Um, you know, for things like, you know, gift certificates, shirts, whatever, we have no issues shipping. Um, One option you do have is to, you know, put out there as a disclaimer that the winner is responsible for shipping. And then after, um, the auction is over and you figure out what the shipping is, you can go back into greater giving and charge them an extra $7 for shipping or whatever the shipping That's costs. Great. That's great. Um, yeah. So you can do that right in greater giving and let, let them take care of that, you know, with the same credit card. Mm-hmm. Um, so another, yeah, another great question. Another great op because shipping is very expensive these, these days. Yep. So. I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I can't. I can't wait to give it a try. And, and I think this is really something that anybody serious about fundraising should <clears throat> take a look at. Um, you could do theme stuff. Again, it doesn't have to be a, a set amount of items. It just seems you could get so creative and, and have so many different applications, you know, to, to make this thing happen. Well, and the the awesome thing is, and I'll kind of um, you know give a plug. I don't work for Greater Giving. I'm not getting paid by Greater Giving, but I've used it for several fundraising. Um, 
opportunities we've had. And it's more than just an auction tool. And we'll cover some of those in a later class. Um, right now, we're just focusing on the auction aspect. But you can use it for ticket sales. Um, you know, if, you're, if your team sells t-shirts or if you want to sell plants or, you know, Valentine's Day goodies or whatever, you can set up fun, uh, fundraising pages to sell ticketed items. Um, if you're running an event like a 5K or a golf tournament, you can set it up to do the registration for you. Um, there are just so many aspects to Greater Giving that you can use it for fundraising. And we have access to all those, which is awesome. Can you sell Merman calendars on this thing? You absolutely can. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, with, I mean, you could set it up to have photos and everything. Um, videos you can set up to have video clips. I mean, if you wanted to do interviews with your merman or what, whatever. Um, and that's another thing about the auction is on the auction page, you can actually add a video that people will see as they come into your auction. That's one of the options. Um, really kind of cool. That's great. <clears throat> so anything else, Lindsay, you want to give us on greater giving or your auction, or you want to do a little plug for your auction and give everybody the website and we'll actually probably flash it up at some point during the, uh, during the show. Wait, before she does that, get her credit card information so we can charge her for the plug. <laughs> yeah, it's msoftballacademy.org. Um, so you can check out uh, our, our um, ACS website. And from there, there's a link to the auction. So you can see all the really great items there and bid on whatever you like if you're interested and you're trying to add some of that Big Ten memorabilia to your, uh, to your fan case. Um, and we, we did want to, um, you know, there are other auction sites that are out there. Um, this is the one that I have used, that Lindsay has used, that we have personal experience with and had great experiences with. Um, if you're doing a smaller auction of less than 20 items, um, there is a tool called 32 Auction that is free to use under 20 items. Um, on that auction, side. However, you cannot collect the money. You actually have to collect that yourself. So there are other tools to look into. I know that when people started posting out on the fundraising page about auctions, there were several options given. Um, so greater giving is just one that we wanted to highlight. Yeah, listen, again, just having gotten used to it over the last couple of days, the utilities there, the ease of use is there, uh, the optics of it look good. It, it just seems to be something that we should all be giving a try, you know, wherever we are and however we can apply it. But uh, great job, Lindsay, on, on the tutorial, which again, we'll share with everybody on our Facebook page and uh, let the bidding begin. Yeah. yeah. And uh, good luck in the Big Ten tournament. Do you guys have a Big Ten tournament this year? Are you guys having one or no? No, no, they they won okay. it this past weekend. Michigan won it. Okay, so we're in the middle of our SEC tournament. So Alabama plays on Thursday, Roll Tide. And maybe we'll see you in the World Series um, maybe. coming up here in a couple of weeks. Um, but thank you again for taking the time to join us. Um, it was a pleasure getting to meet you. And um, we'll see you all later. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.